All right, so in this problem, I have four to the power of x is equal to eight. So obviously here, I wanna find the value of x. So for my solution, first start by rewriting my problem. So I have four to the power of x is equal to eight. Now four here, this is the same thing as two squared. So I'm gonna rewrite this as two squared to the power of x. I, all I did was replace four with two squared. And now eight, this is the same thing as two to the power of three. So I'm gonna replace eight with two to the power of three. So I have two squared to the power of x is equal to two to the power of three. And if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m times n. So 2 to the power of 2 to the power of x, that's going to equal 2 to the power of 2 times x, which is simply 2 to the power of 2x. And now this is equal to 2 to the power of 3. And now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m, is equal to a to the power of n, this means that m is equal to n. Meaning in this case, 2x is equal to m and 3 is n. So I have 2x is equal to 3. And this is a simple equation. All I have to do is divide both sides by 2. So then these two cancel out and I get x is equal to 3 over 2. All right, so in this problem, I have x to the power of x plus one is equal to x. So to solve this, I'm gonna start by subtracting x on both sides. So then these two cancel out, and I'm left with x to the power of x plus one minus x is equal to zero. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m plus n, this is equal to a to the power of m times a to the power of n. So x to the power of x plus one, this is gonna be equal to x to the power of x times x to the power of one. Now I have this minus x is equal to zero. Now if I factor out x, I get x times x to the power of x minus one is equal to zero. So now this gives me two equations. I have x is equal to zero, and I have x to the power of x minus one is equal to zero. So x equals zero, this is already a solution. Now for x to the power of x minus one equals zero, I'm gonna add one on both sides. So then these two cancel out, and I get x to the power of x is equal to one. Now, because x has to be the same number, we obviously know that, well, what number to the power of self is equal to one? That's gonna be one, right? Because one to the power of one is equal to self. So x is equal to one. And there's no, actually, there's no other number that when you take the power of itself is going to equal 1. S meaning x equals 1 is the only solution to this equation. So now to check. The original equation was x to the power of x plus 1 is equal to x. So x to the power of x plus 1 is equal to x. And our first solution was 0. So if I plug in zero, I get zero to the power of zero plus one is equal to zero. Now zero plus one is one, so I have zero power to the power of one equals zero, and zero to the power of any number is itself, so I get zero equals zero. Now to check for one, I get one to the power of one plus one is equal to one. One plus one is two, so I get one to the power of two is equal to one, and one to the power of any number itself, so one equals one.
All right, so in this problem, I have x to the power of x is equal to 100. So I'm going to first start by taking the natural log, or ln, on both sides. So I have ln x to the power of x is equal to ln 100. Now, if I have something in the form ln a to the power of b, I can move this x1 and b to the front. So this can equal b times ln a. So for ln x to the power of x, I can move x to the front, and I'm going to get x times ln x is equal to ln 100. Now ln 100, that's the same thing as ln of 10 squared. So I get x times ln x is equal to ln 10 squared. And if I have something in the form ln a to the power of b, again, I can move 2 to the front. So I get x times ln x is equal to 2 times ln 10. Now, there's something called the W Lambert function. And if I take the W Lambert function of something in the form e to the power of, sorry, a times e to the power of a, this is going to equal a. So this is basically what the W Lambert function is. So if there's something in the form a to the power, a times e to the power of a, that's going to equal a. So what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to rewrite x here as e to the power of ln of x because e, the e and ln cancel out and this results in simply x. So I'm just going to rewrite x as e to the power of ln of x and I have this times ln x is equal to 2 times ln 10. And now this is in the form a times e to the power of a. So now if I take the w Lambert function on both sides, This results in ln x equaling w of 2 times ln 10. And now if I take e to the power of both sides, I get e to the power of ln x is equal to e to the power of w of 2 ln 10. And e to the power of ln x, that's going to equal x. So I get x is equal to e to the power of w of 2 times ln 10. And this is equal to 3.597285, which rounds up to 3.597. So this is my answer to this problem. All right, so I'm going to be proving that 0 divided by 0 is equal to 2. So to do this, I'm going to first start with 0 divided by 0. So 0 divided by 0, this is the same thing as 1 minus 1 over 1 minus 1, because 1 minus 1 is 0, so 0 over 0, 1 minus 1 over 1 minus 1. Now, 1 minus 1 over 1 minus 1, this is the same thing as... 10 minus 10 over 10 minus 10. Again, 10 minus 10 is 0, so I have 0 over 0 again. Now, 10 minus 10 over 10 minus 10, this is the same thing as 100 minus 100 over 100 minus 100. Again, 100 minus 100 is 0, so it's the same thing. Now, I'm actually going to simplify 100 minus 100 over 100 minus 100. So 100 is the same thing as 10 squared, right? So this is the same thing as 10 squared minus 10 squared for our numerator, because 10 squared is 100, so 100 minus 100 is the same thing as 10 squared minus 10 squared. And for my denominator, 10 squared this is the same thing as 10 minus 10. So I'm going to write 10, min 10 times 10 minus 10 times 10. And this is again equal to zero. This is still zero over zero. And now if I have something in the form a squared minus b squared, this is equal to a plus b times a minus b. So 10 squared minus 10 squared, this is equal to 10 plus 10 times 10 minus 10. 
So again, this is completely legal. I'm just using a property of exponent. And for my denominator, I'm actually going to factor out 10. So now I get 10 times 10 minus 10. So now I can actually go ahead and cancel these two 10 minus 10s out. So now I'll be left with 10 plus 10 over 10. 10 plus 10 is 20. So I have 20 over 10, which is equal to 2. So I just proved that 0 over 0 is equal to 2. Now, obviously, 0 over 0 is not equal to 2. And the mistake in this proof is right here when I canceled out 10 minus 10 over 10 minus 10. So what is 10 minus 10? 10 minus 10 is 0. So I'm technically canceling out 0 and 0. And remember, 0 over 0 is not equal to 1. So I can't actually cancel these two out because that's essentially saying, implying that 0 over 0 is 1, which it's not. So that's a mistake in this proof. And 0 divided by 0 is not 2. All right, so in this problem, I have 9 to the power of x is equal to 36. So what I'm first going to do is I'm going to take the log on both sides. So I have log 9 to the power of x is equal to log 36. Now, if I have something in the form log a to the power of b, I can move this exponent b to the front. So this is going to equal b times log a. So in this case, I have log 9 to the power of x. I can move x to the front. So now I have x times log 9 is equal to log 36. Now if I divide both sides by log 9, these two cancel out, and I have x is equal to log 36 over log 9. Now log 36 that's the same thing as log of 9 times 4. So I have that over log of 9. And this is the same thing as, well, if I have something in the form log a times b, this is equal to log a plus log b. So log 9 times 4, that's going to equal log 9 plus log 4. And I have this over log 9. So now this is the same thing as log 9 over log 9 plus log 4 over log 9. Log 9 and log 9, these two cancel out. So I have x is equal to 1 plus log 4 over log 9. And log 4 here. That's the same thing as log of 2 squared. For log 9, that's the same thing as log of 3 squared. So now I can move 2 to the front. So now I have x is equal to 1 plus 2 times log 2 over 2 times log 3. Now these two 2's cancel out. So now I have x is equal to 1 plus log of 2 over log 3. Now, log 2, this is equal to 0 0.301. And log 3, this is equal to 0 0.477. So I have x is equal to 1 plus 0 0.301 over 0 0.477. So now I have x is equal to 1 plus 0 0.631, which is equal to 1.631. All right, so in this problem, I have 5 to the power of x plus 5 to the power of x is equal to 7. So to solve this, I'm going to first start by factoring out 5 to the power of x. So now I have 5 to the power of x times 1 plus 1 is equal to 7. Now 1 plus 1, that's 2, so I have 5 to the power of x times 2 is equal to 7. And now I can divide both sides by 2. So then these two cancel out, and now I have 5 to the power of x is equal to 7 over 2. 
Now if I take the log on both sides, I have log 5 to the power of x is equal to log 7 over 2. If I have something to form log a to the power of b, I can move this exponent b to the front. So this is equal to b times log a. In this case, log 5 to the power of x, I can move x to the front. So now I have x times log 5 is equal to log 7 over 2. Now if I divide both sides by log 5, these two cancel out, and I get x is equal to log of 7 over 2 over log 5. Now, if I have something in the form log a over b, this is equal to log a minus log b. So in this case, log 7 over 2, that's going to equal log 7 minus log 2. And I have this over log 5. Now log 7, this is equal to 0 0.8451 log 2 is equal to 0 0.3070, and log 5, this is equal to 0 0.6990. So x is equal to 0 0.8451 minus 0 0.3070 over 0 0.6990, which is equal to 0 0.7784.